So this is future me stepping in for past me because, well, my microphone decided it didn't want to work, which is highly unfortunate. I guess it's time to retire the old blue. Regardless, I saw these fireworks and instantly thought, hey, if I actually could use these like little nuclear pulses, then these would basically stand in for some Orion drives, which would be absolutely fantastic. So using a little bit of offsetting and a little bit of cal hacks, um, basically the overdrive hack, you can basically use these fireworks as little nuclear pulses and then you can have your own little Orion drive. You just have to make a craft that's small enough, light enough, and has enough control to be able to maneuver the explosions because it's going to be a lot of thrust and it's going to be since it's not consistent it's going to be a lot of drag coming in as well so you're going to fire off and you're going to slow down and you're going to fire off and slow down and it's going to be a bit of a complicated mess but if you do these just right and of course you want to drag down as many of the the size of the fireworks as possible because if you don't do that well it's going to be a f fps killer you don't want that because you're gonna be firing off a lot of these fireworks so here you just kind of drag that up as far as you can after making a new node in your cow copy and paste and now just drag it somewhere in the middle and now you have force and you have also the uh, velocity for your fireworks coming out of there and it's going to be just absolutely insane amount of force and velocity for those fireworks firing off which should using the recoil that is built into it launch you skyward so i wanted to go ahead and hopefully with our little craft be able to make our insertion and um <laughs> Cross our fingers. So, me being super smug here, waiting. So, here we are, we're ready. We're ready for our first test run. Let's fire them on off and see what happens here. And off the ground it goes. Quickly off the ground. But you can see it quickly also hits that drag force and slows down significantly. Unfortunate, but you only have uh, 22, 32 shots? 32 shots. You only have 32 shots to get to orbit and back. So my goal is to leave at least two emergency shots for a retro burn. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I need to pay close attention to how this how many shots I have left so it's time to bring that out and kind of watch it like a hawk to make sure I am optimizing my my thrust so this firework at first I was not a fan of them because you know it's really just something with visual effects and yay fireworks but um, after I realized that there was a recoil, I started destroying things with them. <laughs> and now I have a modified version that shoots out heavier shells. And it just makes life a lot of fun. Because now you have a stock way of destroying crafts. And maybe this will work on Lunar Multiplayer. That would be awesome. So here we are. We're, we are achieving our apoapsis. And now we just need to get... Uh, our, we just need to circularize and hope nothing goes wrong. <laughs> now if you're seeing a lot of smoke, a lot of that dust you're seeing right now is actually from me playing with the size of the meteors and well, I have one that's a little too big and it didn't size up but the smoke trail did so now it goes all the way out of the, of the solar system so the Kerbal system, which is absolutely hilarious, but that's a thing for another day. So basically all we have to do now is get to our 
burn point and then fire off our project Orion firework engine and uh, we're about ready to go just a few shots to get this circularization everything's looking nice and clean I was super confident at this point and then the unthinkable happens <laughs> It broke. It literally broke off the back of my craft. And I was flabbergasted. I, I mean, it's hilarious. But, <laughs> but that's not what I expected. Like, what? Why would, why would that happen? Alright, so basically, back to the drawing board. You need to make sure everything is rooted, is strutted to root. All right, so here we go. Just auto strutting as much as we can to our root. So that way we can uh, make sure that it's not gonna rip itself apart due to the forces. And um, this time we're gonna be a bit more aggressive. We're gonna do our gravity turn around 10,000 instead of doing an early gravity turn because we don't have any boosters to get rid of. And this should allow us to get a lot more thrust going upwards and get our apoapsis out as quickly as possible. Now, my recorder did not appreciate all of the <laughs> fireworks, so it did kind of overwhelm it, but that's okay. It, um, it, hung, it hung in there with me. <laughs> so we're starting our gravity turn, a few shots just here and there and just kind of easing it on in, easing it on in. And this doesn't take too much to actually get into a proper orbit. Once you get your apoapsis set, you basically only need uh, about two to three shots, really on estimate, to get into a proper orbit. Well, <laughs> proper orbit, it's gonna be a hideous orbit, uh, but, in orbit nonetheless so what we need to do here I'm just kind of making sure that things aren't gonna blow apart I'm still extremely nervous <laughs> but our goal right now is uh, basically all we need to do is get to our apoapsis a few seconds out maybe 10 seconds out um, maybe a little less and from there, pop off two to three shots, and hopefully that will be enough to get our orbit. It makes me a little nervous, but things should always work out if you plan. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. <laughs> All right, so three, maybe not three, but seven, seven, seven did the trick. And with two shots in reserve, it gives us a nice hideous orbit, but it, it works. So all we have to do now, make it to our periapsis and then retro burn. Now, this is why I'm kind of glad my periapsis is so hideous is because <laughs> It, uh, it allows me for it allows for an easier burn in. I mean, I could not imagine if I actually had my apoapsis at the same as my periapsis. That would have just been horrible. I definitely would have run out of would have run out of fireworks. I have no clue what I was saying right there either, because uh, I can't read my own lips very well. If you can figure it out, let me know, because I'm still upset my mic didn't work. I have no clue why that happened. Alright, and there's your one shot to get your, to do your insertion. And there is a base, since I have curb and side installed. So there's a base right there nearby for an easy pickup. So we're just going to go ahead and warp and do our intro insertion now one thing I realized 
I put my heat shield I've, uh, on the front to protect me from four launches, but I forgot a heat shield on the back to protect me from this insertion here. So yes, it's nice and beautiful, and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my god, I forgot my heat shield. <laughs> so what I hope what would happen is I could fire off my last firework, and at the same time those four firework, uh, those four firework dispersal units would actually pop first, and now that two of them popped, I can fire off my last one. And then the last two pop off. <laughs> and so basically I'm on my own. <laughs> and there it goes, flipping back around. And I have one shoot in the front and it quickly starts to overheat. And I begin to panic because I already know it's going to, it's going to happen. It's about to happen. And there it goes. That was my shoot. But I have four drogue shoots on here. And I'm crossing my fingers <laughs> that these four drug shoots will have just enough to slow me down. And this is the scariest part of any insertion is when everything is going horribly wrong. So, here we are with four drug shoots. We have our landing legs that are locked away in store mode, so I need something, something more to absorb the impact. So we have to open up these, we have to extend our legs, and then close that back on off so that way when you hit the water, each item is absorbing some of that impact. And then the game will say, oh, okay, you're fine, you should survive this. Enough of it has been, um, enough of the impact has been absorbed, so you should be fine. Should be fine. <laughs> So, with that hope and a prayer, we uh, just fast forward and uh, hope that it doesn't hurt too much when we hit the water and that all of our cribbles survive. Now, I had the silly idea to grab onto a ladder and then, and then um, hit the parachute for that kerbal, but it didn't work, so I just boarded the kerbal back, the kerbal back on there. And here we go, preparing for a landing into the water. The water is a bit more vicious than the land. So here we go, and a little spin to break off a little bit extra, and it works perfectly. <laughs> so there you have it, that is a successful launch and landing that um, basically allowed this craft to actually survive somehow and we could have lost a satellite or what have you but yeah we'll take it for now but some of the things I was saying here I do kind of remember um, I wanted to thank squad and I wanted to thank private division once again for you know, taking Zen, uh, allowing Zen and I to go out to Seattle, it was absolutely fantastic. And this allowed us to, you know, really get to travel and see a place that we really didn't think we'd ever get to see anytime soon. And we got to actually visit places like, uh, there's a, a park uh, to Rizal, and that's like a Filipino, uh, like a Filipino hero, which is really, really freaking awesome that they have that over in Seattle. And uh, yeah, it was just absolutely amazing. So, yes, once again, thank you, Squad. It's been a long, long time that we've been, I've been playing this game. A lot of videos. <laughs> if you haven't watched them all, so a lot of the earlier ones were really cringy, but I still want to, you know. Go watch them, see what happens. Some of them may catch your fancy. Oh, and um, I just want to say thank you all for hanging in there with me all these years. It's been a long time. It's been a lot of videos. We've gone from, you know, thousands of views to sometimes only 10 views. And, you know, it's, it's, it's been up and down for me for uh, YouTube videos. But I thank everyone that's stuck by me all these years. 
it's definitely is a challenge to be a YouTuber, I will say. Because I'm a lot more of a closed off type person. But it's helped me open up and kind of enjoy uh, being out there with everyone. And I really enjoy our Discord uh, community that we've gotten build up, built up after all these years. But thank you all. And uh, definitely check out some of the other videos I've done. And uh, yeah, until the next time, I'll catch you all later. Peace.